This video covers Levine's test and the related Brown-Forsyth test, both of which are non-parametric tests used to look at differences in dispersion. The null hypothesis of these tests is that the samples come from populations with the same dispersion. Both tests require a continuous variable in predetermined categories or groups or samples. They're both univariate tests, but can be used for two samples or for more than two samples. And the purpose is obviously to compare dispersion. They don't assume normality. However, I would recommend Levine's test even for normal data in the case of more than two samples. You can use the F test if you have just two samples, but for more than two, Levine's test is, is best because the parametric test, called Bartlett's test, uh, is highly sensitive to even slight non-normality, so just use Levine's test instead. So standard deviation or variance aren't particularly meaningful terms for non-normal data. So these tests instead calculate the absolute deviation of each data point from the center of its sample. So Levine's test calculates the difference between each point and the mean, or often something called the trimmed mean, and the Brown-Forsyth test uses the median instead. So it looks at the difference, the absolute difference, between every data point in that sample and the median of that sample. So the reasoning behind this procedure is that samples with greater dispersion will have data points that are further away from the center, and so therefore will have larger absolute deviations from the center. So after converting each point from the raw value to the absolute deviation, the method then performs an ANOVA on those absolute deviations. Basically, if one sample or more than one sample has larger absolute deviations than the other ones do, you're likely to get a significant ANOVA result. And using our sort of parallel, that is indicative of significantly different dispersion. So when should you use each test? Well, for more than two samples that are actually close to being normally distributed, you should still use Levine's test, even though the data are more or less normal. But if you have two samples or more than two samples with non-normal data, you have this choice. And so it sort of seems to be rule of thumb that Levine's test using deviances from the mean is best if the distribution is actually still symmetrical, but is what's called heavy-tailed. So sort of flatter and has larger tails than a typical bell curve for the normal distribution. But if you have two samples or more than two samples that are non-normal and are skewed, it's best to use the Brown-Forsyth test for deviances from the median. So basically, Levine's test for symmetrical data, Brown-Forsyth test for skewed data. So here's what you should report. Um, if you're performing the Levine's test, you can probably report standard deviations because it's relatively symmetrical. But for skewed distributions in the Brown-Forsyth test, you should report something called the interquartile range. Um, I didn't mention this in the earlier video, I probably should have, but basically it's just the range from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile of the data. And you've seen this in the box and whisker plots if you're in the class. Um, so it's also important to give the test name and be clear whether you did Levine's test or the Brown-Forsyth test. Uh, because both tests perform an ANOVA, you should give the F statistic, the two degrees of freedom, and the p-value. So here's how you might phrase your results um, in the case of Levine's test, where you can report the standard deviation. For Brown-Forsyth, you might want to report the interquartile range, remember. So to run Levine's test, you're going to need an additional R package called CAR. Um, if you haven't used packages before, you can probably find information online about how to, how to load them into, into your R session. Um, for those in the class, we'll cover it when we meet. Uh, the Levine test function has the same syntax as AOV for ANOVA or the Kruskal test function. And so you write a formula uh, with the numeric data column as a function of the little tilde symbol, uh, the column containing the categorical grouping factors. And you specify the name of the data frame that those two columns come from with the data equals command. So the default is the Brown-Forsyth test, uh, using the median as, as the center. Um, but if you want to perform Levine's test using the mean, you just have to specify center equals mean after giving the data. And so the output looks like this. It lists the test name. Uh, it gives the two degrees of freedom. 
the F statistic and the P-value here. 